just be out with us to the Bahamas. It is paradise, no doubt. And this place has so many good things to talk about, so many pros, but nobody talks about cons. So we've been here many times and we've compiled five cons for visiting the Bahamas. If you're new to our channel, my name is Devon. And I'm Irina. And we create informative travel videos to help you get the most out of your vacation. This will be our personal cons. If you don't agree with our cons, maybe leave a comment and let us know what are your personal cons for visiting the Bahamas. Or if you can add to what we've listed here, please do so. Leave it in a comment as well because spread the word. Why not? We've talked to many locals and of course there are a lot of cons for actually living here in the Bahamas. But we want to list more of the cons for visiting the Bahamas. Just, Just be, be out, out with us. us. Okay, the first one on our list is the pricing here in the Bahamas. It is extremely expensive. Be prepared when you come here to spend. And a lot of times the prices don't... Just say, and the problem we have with that. And the problem we have with that is that the prices don't really match up with the quality, the quality of food or the service. We've been to many high-end restaurants and we don't mind paying high price for excellent service and excellent meals. But here we noticed casual dining go as much as actually the gourmet dining. And, like Irina mentioned, the service is really, 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 really slow. And which brings us to number two con of the Bahamas is the service is this slow. So for us personally, it, it's not a good dining experience overall. I'm not looking forward to dining here in the Bahamas. And I prefer to just grab something like street food which is going to be still slow but a little bit faster and i don't want to pay a, a lot of money and get slow service because it still adds up to the experience not being that good number three and this one you could pretty much find everywhere if you start searching the pushiness of vendors here in the bahamas if you walk around downtown everybody's trying to pull you in to visit their little stores even if you're just walking around minding your own business and don't even look that their way they're still trying to offer you tours souvenirs i mean they would call you from across the street we've had yeah. many times where we're across the street and they're like hey come over here come over here and, and even the way they call you is like they make you feel like you're going the wrong way right so and you need to get their attention and you need to come to them because they have something that they have to tell something you that you're doing urgent. wrong yeah. yeah so they have their little ways to get you or a lot of times you walk in past stores and especially if they'll ask well where are you from when you hear that it's because they're trying to make conversation with you to lure you into their stores and then that's the way you know they do it here so it becomes annoying after a while actually but if you are staying in resorts obviously inside the resorts you do not get it number four speaking number four on the topic of being pushy we find that taxi service here to be very very pushy no matter where you are if you're just strolling along there are so many taxis here and i think that's probably one of the biggest source of incomes on this island is taxi drivers because they are everywhere Irina and I sometimes are walking on back streets where it's residential area mostly and these cars are flying by doing at least 30 miles per hour and the moment they pass us they yell out the window taxi and the cars just go Vroom. and we're like so if we did say yeah taxi like they would like slam the brake and we would have to run and jump in it's like that's how aggressive they are in trying to get you to get into their taxi and not only that, I just cannot stand when the taxi drivers are trying to hassle you. When we were trying to get a cab to go from Margaritaville to our next Airbnb, 
that was only an eight minute drive a taxi driver was about to charge us 35 dollars for that eight minute ride this is ridiculous so we went and asked another taxi driver how much he would charge and he would charge 15 dollars right so initially when we we were staying in margaritaville for a little while when we walked out of margaritaville they called the taxi over so the taxi pulled up right in front of margaritaville that's when he wanted to charge us $35. So Irina was like, no way. We know how far it is, where we're going. We see it on Google map. We know it's not far. And we've been here long enough to know the distance and how much they should charge. And so not we only that, even the valet was yanking my suitcase out of my hand to already put the suitcase in his car. Right. And I'm like, no, I need to find out the fare first. Right, and as we told you in other videos, you need to find out the fare before, negotiate fares before getting into the cabs. Otherwise, you'll find yourself in a in a tight spot so we walked away from margaritaville across the street where there were a few cabs parked there some cab drivers were just hanging out i just casually walked up to them and say hey this is where we want to go here on google map it's eight minutes away how much would you charge he's like oh i'll do it for 15. so from 35 dollars to 15 dollars that's a major 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 difference and uh, also i don't like the taxi arrangements here that it is legal to charge per suitcase right so if you didn't know that now you know so for example if you if you're a couple irene and i we get into a taxi whether we're coming from the airport or from a hotel if irena has a carry-on bag a suitcase and i have one that is six dollars it's three dollars per suitcase if you have a, a knapsack a, a book bag or just a personal purse they won't charge you for that but if it's a suitcase they charge you per suitcase so if we had two pieces each you see how quickly it adds up so and, and they don't necessarily tell you that they'll just tell you oh the price is x amount but they have already factored in that oh they have six pieces of luggage i'm charging them you know the total amount plus whatever it costs to get from here to there. Yeah, and they can also vary the price depending on how many people get into the cab. So if you have a larger family, even though it's the same cab, the same distance, they will charge you more. Right, and also if you're heading from off the cruise ship and you get into a regular taxi or out of a hotel and you're coming to the Atlantis, be prepared to have two dollars with you in cash in cash why because when you cross the bridge going to paradise island to the atlantis there is a toll booth they don't tell you when you're getting into the taxi that you have to have this two dollars when you get to the right so yeah. as they're crossing their bridge they'll say i need two dollars for the toll and you're like wait what i didn't know number one there was a toll number two i didn't know i had to pay extra from the price you quoted me when i got into the cab so now I got to come up with $2 more and not that $2 is a deal breaker, but sometimes you just don't have that $2. So then what are you going to do? Because you're based everything on the fare they told you. So they don't tell you that. So our tip is when you're getting into a cab, number one, negotiate the price that you're expecting to pay. If you're fine with the price, make sure that there's no hidden fee as far as luggages or whatever. And ask them if you are coming to the Atlantis, ask them, does that include the price of the toll? And one more thing on the topic of taxis or anywhere in the pumps for that matter, they, uh, they stress tipping way too much. Coming from America, it is customary to tip, so you don't even need to mention that. But here in the Bahamas, it kind of comes a little bit too much. So when we got into a cab, he told us the price for the cab and he said, tip is not included. Right. During the ride, he mentioned again, uh, you know, it doesn't include the tip. And when we were getting off, he kept saying, okay, this, this, is, this is without the tip. And in in a lot of places like this, we noticed we went for a free tour, and uh, they mentioned, oh, "Okay, I appreciate the tips." Then at the register, they say, "Do you want to add a tip to your card?" So right. they keep pushing the tip in, in my opinion, a little bit too aggressively. And in that situation, Irina was talking about um, to speak to speak in specifics. We walked into a store that sold teas, and. A, a, woman, a young lady approached us and said, I'm going to give you kind of like a tour. Basically, what she did was she told us what are the names of the different teas they have to offer, what the teas are uh, good for, the health benefit of each tea, 
and she offered us a sample of the tea. Well, as she was talking, that's when she mentioned, you know, tips not including, meaning she expected us to tip her for her to give us the information on the product that they are selling in the store, which to me makes no sense because if you're there to give me a sample and to tell me about your products, that is your sales pitch. That's what's going to decide whether or not I'm going to purchase your product. So why should I tip you on top of that? So that kind of rubbed us the wrong way. It was kind of odd. Of course, we didn't tip for that because we didn't see any reason to tip because we actually ended up buying like six bags of teas, which came out to, yeah, it came out to like what? 60 80 something dollars so why would we add a tip on top of that so situations like that made no sense and number five what we've noticed after saying staying here a few weeks already is that there is no gray area between high-end luxury hotel resorts um accommodations and actually staying here in like say an airbnb if you stay at the resort everything is there for your convenience but when you stay at the airbnb the infrastructure is just not there first of all if you stay in the airbnb you must stay in a busy touristy area and or as close as possible to a busy tourist and, area and make sure if you stay in downtown don't book anything further than three blocks out why? Because again, there are no streets for you to walk. There are no sidewalk. No sidewalk. So you're sharing the road and the cars do not even try to pull a little bit away. They're hunking for you to be walking there. And as we mentioned before, drivers here in the Bahamas drive very aggressively. And for us, we don't really feel comfortable renting a car or ATV. There are such options, but again, it's driving on the left side. There are a lot of accidents, a lot of drunk drivers. So we don't really feel comfortable driving. We don't like the taxi service, the fact that they try to hassle you. So and most of the time, we just walk. And if you are, again, if you're staying a little bit farther away, and you have to walk to get a taxi. So it's already inconvenience. There are no little convenience stores where you can simply purchase water. The closest supermarket is 15, 20 to 30 minute walk uh, to the area where you would normally stay as a tourist. And the public transportation is not that good either. First of all, Google Maps don't even show you what the routes are for, for where you need to go. So you need to ask the locals which bus you need to take, where does it stop? It does run uh, uh, pretty often, but it does run pretty often, but the service cuts off at 6.30 p.m. And again, you have to make sure you're probably out of that area at 4 p.m. in case, you know, uh, the bus doesn't come. Currently, our Airbnb is about a little over 20 minutes to walk over the bridge to Paradise Island to come to Atlantis, which is not bad at all. But when it's time for us to leave here and go to the airport because we're inward, more inward inland and it's all residential, there are no taxis driving by there. So it's like, how are we going to get a taxi from where we are? to the airport now of course like we mentioned before there is no uber service here so what we have to do is when we come to atlantis like when we're here now the day before we leave we have to go outside to the front find a taxi driver tell him hey listen we're looking to leave um bahamas on tuesday at this time this is where we're staying is there any way we can get your whatsapp number and arrange for him to pick us up because we have to leave pretty early in the morning and again there are no taxis where we are so that is the only way for us to get a taxi based on where we're living so that's what irena was saying the infrastructure is really not there if you're just kind of just staying here so that's it we hope this video has helped someone out there if you're planning on staying here make a better decision of course like we mentioned before bahamas is absolutely beautiful and if you get a chance to come here you should definitely do so and it's a must visit and jbo approved but again every place comes with their pros and cons and these are just our five personal cons would we come to the bahamas again absolutely, absolutely. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. And as usual, just, just be, be out, out with us. us.